17 months ago, I became a dad. Thank you. <laughs> My daughter was born October 26, 2022, and after 40 hours of excruciating labor for my wife, our baby got stuck. And everyone started yelling, and I got elbowed out of the way, and I watched as doctors jumped in the air and punched down on my wife's stomach to save her and the baby. They got her out, they presented her to us, and I looked at her, and I felt nothing. But I'd always known two things with complete certainty when I was growing up. I wanted to be a dad one day, and I was going to be an actor, because my whole family were actors, except my little brother, Luke. I started at age seven, and I remember walking into audition rooms and morphing into whoever they needed me to be to get the part. And even when I wasn't in character, I was still performing. I was smiling and cracking jokes to get the validation of the adults in the room which helped me get roles, but it didn't really help me make friends with kids my own age. I had a couple growing up, but I was always so worried about what they thought of me that I could never relax around them. Then in high school, friendship got easier, not because I stopped performing to get people to like me, I just got better at it. And then some kids thought it was cool that I was an actor on TV. Girls started noticing me. Life was pretty good. This summer, before I graduated. I was on a canoe trip in the Northwest Territories, and a float plane found my group on the river, and I watched my father walk towards me on the rocky beach and tell me that my younger brother Luke had drowned. Everything changed, and my grief destroyed me. I turned to drugs and alcohol and friends and girls to try to forget how much pain I was in. And I went to theater school, but I was so fucked up I could barely graduate. And I got praise and lead roles, but I realized I didn't even want to be an actor anymore. But how was I supposed to give up my main source of validation and identity? So I ran away. I went to Spain and then China, and I discovered teaching and entrepreneurship. Traveling taught me so much, but I was still performing and self-medicating, punishing myself. It ended up with a herniated disc in my lower back and I came crawling home. For the next seven months, uh, I was on my mom's living room couch in downtown Toronto. I would wake up, I would take my pills, and I would watch The Sopranos or The Office until I fell asleep. I was up to seven Percocets a day. I wasn't getting better. I had no job, no purpose, no hope. And then one day, a doctor told me something that changed my life. He said, if you want to heal, you got to go to therapy. I've been avoiding it since my brother died, but it was way past time. So I went and I learned that pain in the mind affects pain in the body. And I opened up and I started connecting with people for the first time, not performing, but being real and sharing stories of grief and pain and fear and resilience. And I found purpose. I became a speaking coach, which means I get to connect with people and hear their stories for a living. And I discovered what I want to share with you all tonight. Validation is a drug. But connection is medicine. When we seek validation, which is needing to be declared good enough by other people, it's addictive and it's destructive and it's never enough. But human connection heals us. When we see and feel seen by others, not for the bullshit that we talk about, but for who we really are, the scared, soft, lonely, and vulnerable people, it nourishes the mind and the body and the high lasts. So 17 months ago, when I looked at my daughter and I felt nothing, I was guilty and ashamed. I, didn't, I wanted so badly that moment where everyone talks about when you look at your child and you instantly fall in love, and I didn't want to admit that it wasn't happening for me. 
But everything I'd been through told me I had to tell my wife what I was going through. And she calls the midwife over who said, are we having some feelings? And I said, yes, we are. And I told her, and she said, lots of dads feel this way. You are normal. And then they brought the baby to me. And I sat in a hard hospital chair, and I held my newborn daughter to my chest. And she looked up at me through swollen eyes, and a rush went through my body, the highest, most loving form of human connection that I would have ever thought possible. And I finally learned the difference between getting validated and finding true love. Thank you.